Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of Beauty and the Bolt. Today we're going to be learning about Electricity 101. Current and voltage and resistance um, and all the fun jazz that comes with that. Just like anything, you need to learn the foundation before you can go on and do cool, amazing things. Stay tuned and hopefully we'll demystify some stuff for you. to understand is something called charge and charge involves atoms so if you zoom in like teeny, tiny, tiny, into anything in the world you're gonna find atoms because that is what matter is made out of and in electricity atoms are super important the like rough draft overview of an atom um, if you really are interested take a chemistry class because that's out of the scope of what we're doing today but an atom looks a little bit like this All right, so in the middle of your atom is something called the nucleus, and that consists of the neutrons, which I've drawn in green, and protons, which I've drawn in red. Neutrons have no charge. They are just particles that exist, and protons have a positive charge. And these live inside of the nucleus. And outside of those float our little friends um, that we work with all the time, and these are called electrons. All right, and electrons loop around the nucleus in um, patterns called clouds, or if you learned Bohr's model, they're in shells. Either way, they aren't in the nucleus, and they are free to roam and go wherever they like, whereas breaking the nucleus apart is extremely difficult. And this is what defines what, you know, a, um, what an element is, that the electrons just chill. Having a party on their own, because they're electrons and they like dance. Ignore me. Just don't, yeah. This atom, um, a neutral charge, we would add another electron here. And these would be flowing around the nucleus like such. But as I said, electrons are fairly free to go as they please. They can break off and do their own thing. We can definitely lose an electron and just be down to one. Keep this image in mind as we go on and talk about current. All right, so current is the flow of electric charge. This word might sound familiar to you if you, I don't know, like paddle down rivers or something in your free time. That came out weird. It's actually really the same thing. So the current of a river is how fast water is moving from, you know, the top of the river to the bottom of the river, from like the lake to the ocean, or from wherever the river is coming and going and you have all the, the water flow in the middle. Current in electricity, electrical current, is the same thing. It is the flow of electric charge from point A to point B, most frequently from the positive end of the battery to the negative end of the batteries. So that is, current is the flow of electric charge. And notice that the charge here is really important because it is not the flow of electrons. Don't think of it as the flow of electrons, and I'll tell you why in a second. It's the flow of charge. But as an example, let's take a battery. This is the positive end, so this is where all the positive charges hang out. All the negatives are down here hanging out. Your battery is very positively charged on the positive end and negatively charged on the negative end of the battery. Surprise, surprise. Now, if we take that same copper wire, connect it from point A, uh, from positive to negative, and we have all of our nuclei here, and each one of those, remember, has an electron. Right now, this copper wire is only, end, is only connected to the positive end of the battery. But, and you can see we have no connection right here. But if we were to connect that, that's when we start the flow of electrons. Because suddenly, all of these electrons are way more attracted to the, the massive positive source here. So these electron friends are going to go racing down to join 
the positive end here. And so they're going to jump to this one, and then they're going to jump to this one, and then they're going to jump here. So all the electrons are just rapidly jumping because they want to be in this positive side. Meanwhile, all of the electrons in here are like, I see the light, I see the positive, and I want to go to it because neg uh, opposites attract. You know, they're like falling head over heels in love with that positive charge, and they need to go get there right now. All these extra electrons in here are like jumping out and racing to go to the next one. And that's what causes a current. So this current would be almost instantaneous. Actually, if you take a copper wire and you connect it from negative to positive, you will short your battery. You'll basically kill it. Um, and you could even start a fire. So you know, if you're stranded in the woods somewhere and you need fire to stay warm, I just saved your life. You're welcome. But I shouldn't have told you that, because now everyone is going to go blow up batteries. And short circuits are bad. You don't want to do this. If you had like a light bulb somewhere in here, um, those electrons would then go power your light bulb or your motor or whatever that actuation is, and that is you know, the purpose of current. All right, so the next thing is voltage. So voltage is the potential energy between two points in the circuit. So if you've taken any mechanical physics class, you might know that potential energy is base in, a, in layman's terms, height. If you're holding a cat off of the top of a skyscraper, its potential energy is very high because it has the potential to fall very far. And I said cat because it'll land on its feet and then meow ferociously and then just walk back into the building. This, this same metaphor can kind of be used for voltage in electricity. So here's the positive end of your battery and here's the negative end of your battery. And just like the drawing of the short circuit that I just did, um, your charge is going to flow, your current is going to flow from positive to negative. Carl gets on the roller coaster and he has 10 volts of potential energy and then as he goes down the, the, the roller coaster he expends that and here he has zero volts of potential energy because he is at ground, he's at zero. And to expand this metaphor even further, if I were to take this roller coaster and I'm going to do roller coaster number two in green, you can think of this as like time. If I want to increase the current, I can take the same loading platform, but then drop it down like this. And now, Carl is going to have a way more fun roller coaster ride because he has a much higher current. He's going to go down much faster. So the next concept we're going to go over is called resistance. This plateau here, that's the resistor. So that basically just slows down the flow of electrons. So now, when Carl gets on his little roller coaster car, he's going to go down and then plateau. And that'll slow him down. And then down the rest to zero. So again, this is positive. And this is negative. In the real world, resistors could be anything. There are resistors, which are pieces of metal, and they're made literally just to resist. Um, but then there's also resistors like light bulbs and motors and anything that everything has resistance. Even wires have resistance in the real world. In the imaginary physics land professor world, um, there are perfect wires, and they have no resistance. But in the real world, every single thing that conducts electricity has an internal resistance. Even batteries have a resistance. Let's imagine this as just a normal resistor. So that's the electrical symbol for a resistor, is like a zigzagged, zigzagged, zigzagged line. And by the way, in the, in the real world, resistors usually look like this. And then they have like different colored stripes on them. So that, you might have seen this in an electronics kit somewhere. But it could also be a light bulb. Or it could be heating element, so like a, a heating pad. Um, or it could be a speaker. Like literally anything uh, and everything will resist current and resist electricity. Um, but these are just kind of a couple of like random examples uh, that can get your imagination going. Resistors are, are the core of kind of how we will approach circuits in the future. Um, and in our next video, when we dive into Ohm's law 
and some really basic circuits, you'll see why. All right, so now that we understand the theory, let's do something significantly more fun. <laughs> oh, the wheel's locked. That was less graceful <laughs> than it was supposed to be. <laughs> so now that we've got that down, let's do something more fun. All right, when I was a little kid, I absolutely loved running around in lightning storms because I thought lightning was the coolest thing ever, and also nobody told me not to. And I'm definitely not alone in my fascination with lightning. Long before any kind of research on electricity had been done, there was something called the electric fish, a literal fish that would send a, a jolt, a shock, through you if you touched it. Um, texts dating back to 2750 BC um, referred to it as the thunder of the Nile, and it was frequently prescribed to people with headaches um, that they would touch the fish and hopefully that shock would make the headache go away. I prefer ibuprofen. To be perfectly honest, that sounds like some sort of twisted version of like medieval electric shock therapy. Um, but that fascination with electricity through the years has never gone away. All right, so here you can see I have a tube that I'm really struggling to balance. Um, but this is going to represent your wire, and each of the little balls in it is charged. So um, just like the drawing, if I push one more, then we get one that falls out. And if I push another one, one falls out. Ah! So now we have just one charge left in here, but pretend that it's a representation of all of them. <laughs> um, so it's at one end of my wire. And if I increase the voltage, you'll see that the current also increases. And if I increase the voltage a lot, the current also increases by a lot. All right, so moving on to something significantly cooler than just something I can hit Andrew with. Um, let's try an actual circuit. All right, so now we have a slightly more complicated circuit marble setup. Uh, this one might look familiar. It's literally just the straight short, short circuit wire um, from the top of the battery to the bottom of the battery. Um, there is no resistor. There is nothing inhibiting its progress down. This one over here has two resistors. It has this spinning wheel thing, and it also has this diagonal track that zigzags along. Um, so what we're going to be looking out for is to see which marbles get to the bottom first. So if this is the positive, this is the negative end, this is ground. Um, and we want to see which marbles win, basically. Okay. All right, without any further ado, three, two, one. So you can see here, it was super obvious that these ones went straight to the bottom, and these ones were still kind of slowly meandering their way through. Um, so that's a really good visualization of uh, like a short circuit versus what a resistor would look like. All right, so you, you may have noticed that this, uh, this little power wheel, water wheel thing got spun by the marbles passing through. And that's a great analogy for um, something like a motor, where the electrons passing through do cause that rotational energy. Yeah, so this is a pretty much a direct transfer of the potential energy from the height of the falling marbles to some kind of other energy, like rotational energy or um, heat energy or light energy. Um, that's what's happening here. And with that, hopefully you learned a thing or two about electricity and um, the theory behind it. And then next time we can jump into actually using it, which is the fun part. So stick around, and I'll see you later.